so welcome back to my channel. So hello, today I am doing another installment of my reading short horror and extreme horror novellas uh, video. I filmed a couple of these in the past. I will try to leave a couple linked down below and I'm just going to be mood reading. So I don't really know. I don't have a plan of what books I want to read. I kind of have an idea for some of them, but I'm going to try to read as many as I can for this video. And yeah, if you have any horror novella recommendations that you haven't seen me talk about or put in a video, leave them in the comments down below so I can check them out for a future installment of one of these videos. Yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right in. So I started reading Bella Station by Samantha Kolesnik and Brian Smith. So this was a arc that was sent to me from Samantha, so thank you so, so much! I'm so excited because I'm just like a huge fan of her writing. If you guys have been on this channel for a while, you know how hard I have obsessed over her in the past. So um, also, this is my first time reading something by Brian Smith. I know he's super popular. I haven't gotten around to reading him yet. So I'm super excited. So this book is basically two novellas morphed into one. It's like two novellas about the same characters. So we're basically just following these um, different characters in this Pennsylvania town called Belleth Station. There's lots of like sketchy people in this town. There's a girl that is um, trying to escape her abusive husband and there's a serial killer and we're just following a whole bunch of different perspectives. Um, and I only got 53 pages in so far, um, so I'm still trying to like figure out what's gonna happen. There were some, like the serial killer scenes are just naturally my favorite so far. He already killed some people in the beginning of the book, so I'm just curious to see where this goes. Um, so the first half of the book is Samantha's uh, novella, that's what I'm reading, and then the second half is Brian's novella. But yeah, I just am looking forward to continuing to read this. I'm off work today. I took a PTO day today and tomorrow because I have some things like around the apartment that I have to get done, and my mental health has been terrible at work, uh, just very stressed, and then my my pain has been terrible. I was up all night last night, literally all night long, with severe pain. Um, as always, I hate having to plug this, but in the description box I will have a link for my GoFundMe because I need an out-of-network with my insurance surgery um so it's going to be really 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 expensive yeah thank you so 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 much to anyone that's like already donated it honestly means the world to me even just sharing honestly means so much to me so yeah thank you uh that will always be linked in the description box until like after my surgery and stuff so yeah um, I am going to continue reading this today and I will get back to you once I have an update. Okay, hi. So it is a few hours later. Sadly, I didn't get to read as much as I wanted to so far today because I was doing like these courses and uh, doing a whole bunch of chores. My cat is shaking the camera again. Listen, like all my videos are repeats of one another. <laughs> but um, I did get to page 117, so I only have 100 pages left. I got to Brian's novella. Um, so yeah, I did finish Samantha's novella, and I really liked it. I like how all the characters are connected to one another. So you just have, th this cat is literally driving me insane. You have the serial killer. You have the main character, Krista, who's trying to escape her abusive husband. You have, you know, her boyfriend, Nick, that she's been seeing. And then you have, you know, the messed up sheriff and the girl who works at the hotel and all of them like you think that they're separate characters but they all are intertwined somehow and when everything starts to come together and just you know there was like the typical bleak sort of ending that I was like oh shit 
Um, I don't know. I ended up really liking it. And now I'm on Brian's novella. And it is like... I can tell something insane is going to happen. Because it's the same main character. So it's Krista who's dating Nick and has the abusive husband and is trying to like escape that but it's like all the same people but a totally different novella and it's like crazy so already we start with like violence like right from the beginning so I can't wait to see where this goes I'm hoping I can finish this tonight and then give you like a nice little summary in the morning I'm hoping tomorrow I'm off tomorrow um I just have a physical therapy appointment in the morning I'm hoping I can read for most of the day Okay, so it is the next day, and I finished Bella Station. I'm going with four stars. I thought this was so well written, so well done, and I just, I think this is one of the most, like, unique horror books I have ever read. It was just a really solid book for me, and I highly recommend. I just like how Brian's story was so totally different from Samantha's, and it just worked you know it was just two separate novellas with the same characters in the same town and I don't know I just think it was really well done really unique and really creative so it was just a solid solid book for me this comes out May 9th so hopefully this video will be up before then but definitely recommend you check this out and then I just started 100% Match by Patrick C. Harrison III. A couple of you guys told me to read this one. And guys, I'm 30% in and I am so fucking obsessed so far. I am, <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So the, we're following this guy. He's very much giving off Patrick Bateman vibes. He's like, He's looking for his 100% perfect match and he's like you know he works at this fast food restaurant he's like girls don't like people that work in fast food restaurants it's like so much harder for us to find our perfect match and he like fucks with people's food like he puts snot and stuff in people's food like one of those Ugh. so we start finding out more about him and he is a terrible person a serial killer <laughs> and um yeah he's like <laughs> what the hell did he say I have to read this to you he literally dragged me so he's talking about like statistics he's like uh, you know, 62% of women prefer a man with a medium tan. So every day I go out and I walk for 10 minutes to get my skin to a medium olive complexion. <laughs> like he is Patrick Bateman, right? And he's like, 97% of women prefer a man with a car. Unfortunately, I don't have one, but I do own a house, which 86% of women prefer a man to own a house. And he has like all these statistics about like what women want. He says 65% of people, no matter their gender, race, or sexual orientation, who watch reality TV have a diminished self of self, a sense of self-worth and have virtually no hope for humankind as a whole. <laughs> He literally just dragged me. This psycho man just dragged me in this book. I am obsessed. I am so fucking invested to see where this goes. So I literally just went to get my camera and brought it out to the living room where I'm reading this because I have been cackling to myself. I'm home alone. I'm sitting here literally cracking up laughing at this book. This is literally like comedy horror gold right here. Listen, Patrick, if you're watching this, I'm your biggest fan already at 34% in. I'm your biggest fan. Okay, so I just finished 100% match. It's a super quick read. It's like 90 pages. It took me like one hour to read and I loved this. I don't want to give anything else away because it's so short. Um, but this was just such a fun, super quick, extreme horror read. Like if you are looking for a horror book to get you out of a slump, 
this would be it, okay? Um, my only complaint, I wish it was longer. <laughs> like we just started getting into like some of the extreme horror stuff at the very last few pages. So I'm like, oh my god, I wish it was longer. Like if he would have explored that ending even more. <gasps> so I don't know. This is a five star read, potentially like a 4.5 because I wish that it was longer. I don't know. That's like such a compliment when I say that I wish books were longer because I never, ever, ever say that. So yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what I want to read next. I have some options. So I also downloaded um, Grand Pappy by Patrick C. Harrison III. Um, Judith recommended Rabid Madness by Brian G. Berry. Um, someone recommended Violence on the Meek to me by Stuart Bray. I have Shotgun Nun by Harrison Phillips. I have Toxic Love by Christopher Triana, who I am freaking obsessed with. So I think I might read that one next. Um, I also have Better the Devil You Know. I have a bunch of John Athen, but they might be too long for this video. I have Rites of Extinction. I have so many books. I have a bunch of like Judith Sonnet books. Okay, so I have some uh, like physical uh, novellas as well that I still need to read and all of these sound like great options. One of you guys actually asked me to read Bad Vibrations. I really want to read this one. This is where we talk things out. I think this is going to be the next book that I read. I have The Bleak Season by Lucas uh, Mangum. This was another recommendation by Judith. And then I have To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. Okay, I think I'm gonna read, this is where we talk things out next. I'm currently working. I'm on my lunch break. I have to go back to work in a few minutes and I'm looking rough. I know. Um, but last night I started, this is where we talk things out. And then I finished it just now on my lunch break. And okay. okay. So this book right off the bat instantly had me hooked. Like the writing is just so fast paced and like easy to get into. Like just really well done and so basically we are following this girl Miller and she um has this mom Sylvie and they are estranged and her mom was like super super abusive and mentally ill and um so for years she's been just kind of like avoiding her mom and she decides that she is going to go meet up with her mom to talk things out and hopefully try to like gain back some sort of relationship with her so her mom invites her to this like cabin that she owns and it's kind of like the middle of nowhere during this massive massive snowstorm so it's that snowy isolated setting and this book all takes place um within the span of like three days yeah like three four days i don't know something like that and so you know super fast paced and Basically, I don't really want to say anything else. Like, I feel like it's best to go in sort of blind, just knowing that she is going to go meet up with her super, like, mentally ill, abusive mom. Um, this book is not extreme horror. It's very much, it's more so, like, psychological horror. Obviously, trigger warnings for, like, violence and family abuse and family trauma, things like that, fat phobia, like her mom is constantly making comments about her weight. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I just had to keep reading. I had to know where this was going to go. I kind of mixed on my rating. I, at first I was like, okay, four stars. Like this is just a really solid, solid novella for me. But the more I think about it, the more I like really, really loved it. 
this might be five stars highly highly recommend this one and I think I'm gonna start Toxic Love by Christopher Triana next because I have been craving another Christopher Triana ever since reading Full Brutal my favorite book of all time so good morning it's Friday morning is this really weird that I'm doing an update in bed at 8 a.m. in literally my pajamas <laughs> I just don't feel like getting up and getting my camera and I'm just having quite the stressful morning here. I'm just having quite the day already. There's just so much going on that I'm stressed about. Um, so I wanted to give an update at some point. I did start Toxic Love by Christopher Triana and I'm 60% of the way in. And let me just say this, okay? I'm kind of questioning my sexuality a little bit. <laughs> Listen, Christopher Triana is the only one that can make me do this. So, okay, so we're following this guy. His name's like Ashbrook or something. And he um, is this crime scene cleanup guy. Like he has to clean up the blood and the guts and stuff left from crime scenes from like murders and shit. So he is working there, you know, hating his job. And now his boss gets him a new partner. And it's like this 20 something year old girl named Sage, who um, only took the job because she has a fetish or a kink for blood. <laughs> so she likes to fuck in blood and she just took this job so she can be horny all the time. <laughs> so it is crazy. I am in love with Sage. Like, I kind of think that I might be a little bit gay. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, Christopher Triana's writing is just so stunning and immaculate that I'm questioning my sexuality now. So yeah, it's a lot of like blood and like gory porn. Like they are just fucking all the time. <laughs> That's this whole book. And now like I was really into it. And now like after the 50% mark, I'm kind of like, all right, it's starting to drag a little bit. Like it's kind of repetitive. I'm like, we get it. You have a kink. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, and it's kind of starting to get really ridiculous, like off the wall bananas, ridiculous. And I just, I can't stand the main character. I like hate being inside of a guy's head because I'm like, ugh, like grossed out by them. <laughs> so we'll see where this goes. Okay, so I wanted to share something super cool. So you guys know, I mean, these are my like four favorite books, right? For the Sake Of by Judith Sonnet. First of all, came out with these new covers. This is the new print. It's this cute little mass market size with this new cover. And look at this. Let me show you something. In the back, I am in the like dedications, acknowledgements, whatever. Look at that. That's me. That's my name. Yes, right next to McKay, my love. So thank you so much, Judith. This honestly made my day. I had no idea that she even put me in there until McKay was like, hey, do you know that you're in this book? So obviously I had to put it on display right there, but ah, thank you so much, Judith. I literally screamed. I love her. Go read this book. Go buy it. Thank you so much. Hi, babies. It's Saturday. Um, hopefully I don't look like a lion with this headband on. Um, okay. So I have some updates for you. So I feel like absolute crap today. That's nothing new. So I was going to like clean and get stuff done today, but I'm like, eh, reading is always the correct answer. Um, and the reason that I procrastinate so much, but this morning I actually ended up finishing Toxic Love by Christopher Triana. And this one was wild because I think I said at around the halfway mark, Belle, you better not. Mm -mm. Hey, come on. I think I said around, 
see what I mean? Every time I get the camera out, the cat comes in and starts rubbing on the tripod. I don't know what it is. She loves this tripod so much and it's so annoying. Sorry. Um, but I think I said around the halfway mark. Um, I was like, oh, this is kind of getting repetitive. It was just like a lot of repetition with these sex scenes and then like these things just kind of like kept repeating itself. But, but some craziness ended up happening and like things with the plot were going places that I didn't expect. There were some twists in there and I was like, okay, like I ended up becoming invested again and really wanted to see where this ended up going and um yeah I liked the second half of it it was a disgusting wild pornographic time I don't know I feel like this is like smut for people who are fucked up like I am <laughs> I don't know I ended up giving this one four stars I really enjoyed it this was my fourth Christopher Triana book and I can't wait to read all of them because I just, I'm obsessed with his writing. His writing is just so well done. I don't know what this is, but I don't know. I, 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 just, I just think he's great. He's a great writer. Then this morning, I started a little book <laughs> that was recommended by one of you guys in my comment section. But if you recommended this book to me, comment down below because I want to thank you. And that book is Violence on the Meek by Stuart Bray. It is like 130 pages. I'm like 60% through and I can't stop reading this book. This book is fucked up. Okay, fucked up. So in this book, we're following this guy, our main character. He is insane. So we are following this guy, his name's Paul. And basically, Paul writes this autobiography. And in the beginning of the book, he's like, this is my fucking autobiography, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's literally how he talks like every other word in this book is fuck. So he shares his autobiography and kind of what happened to him and like, going through his childhood and his adulthood kind of the, the fucked up things that he did and then he's like okay I'm gonna write this autobiography put it out there and I'm gonna kill myself that sort of thing so when I say this is honestly like I, this has to be one of the most fucked up books I think I've ever read in my entire life like this book is offensive in ways that I didn't even know existed <laughs> like this book is so fucked up. So, I mean, this has some of the most descriptive scenes of animal abuse I think I've ever read in the beginning of the book, which is my trigger. Um, this has sexual rape descriptions of these things, violence, like insane. This book is wild. I really don't want to give anything else away because I went in completely blind not knowing what this was about, just that it was about some psycho and I am like oh, every chapter there's like a, a twist or like a cliffhanger where I'm like what the hell? Also Paul is like low-key funny. Like <laughs> he's a terrible terrible man. Serial killer rapist animal abuser but some of the things that he says he just hates everyone he hates the world he hates life and I can relate to that <laughs> so some of the things that he says I am just like wow I wish Paul was our president <laughs> okay hello so I finished yesterday I finished violence on the meek today Sunday so yesterday um, I finished that book and then read another one. So I'm going to give you like some final updates here. So I finished Violence on the Meek. This book, I loved it. It was a five star read for me. It was so over the top, so insanely graphic, disturbing, disgusting. It was extremely offensive, which was the point. Let me fix this. 
you know, it's supposed to be shocking, offensive, disgusting, trigger warnings galore. It's supposed to be shocking and <laughs> It, it was all of the above. This book was wild. And then the epilogue at the end, it just says epilogue. Just kidding. There is no epilogue, you dumb cunt. And I was like, five stars, baby. The main character was so easy to hate because he was such a terrible person. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? He's like low-key funny. <laughs> <laughs> the things that happen along the way were just wild. It was a wild time. Basically like commits a bunch of crimes and then tries to like flee and like go to another state and hide out and it is insane. It is completely insane and I just loved it. I don't know. It was like everything that I was looking for at the time because you know what? I'm like extremely depressed this weekend. I don't know what it is. Like just the weather has been rainy and just awful and I just feel really depressed and I'm angry all the time. <laughs> and so this book is just like pure hatred, anger for the world and for other people. And I was like, you know what? Low-key relatable. I mean, this is definitely one of the most like fucked up extreme horror books I think I've ever read. Like it is really graphic. Um, so take what I say with a grain of salt, obviously don't read it if you can't handle those things that I mentioned, but this was wild. And then I read To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. I read this whole book uh, last night and I was kind of conflicted on my feelings a little bit, but I did end up really liking it at the end. So we are following this woman and she... Basically in the beginning of the book we find out like her entire family basically died and she's going through a lot of grief and trauma and she's suffering from mental illness. She has this girlfriend and the girlfriend's like you really need to go back to therapy because her mental health is just shit, right? And she becomes obsessed with vultures. She has this obsession with the way that vultures feed on the dead and dead creatures and as the book goes on she just becomes more and more mentally unstable and is just in this huge downward spiral the book is beautifully written um but it is a little like flowery kind of poetic for me and the thing with me is the first like half of this book i wasn't sure how how i was going to feel because i am not someone that analyzes literature. I don't understand like metaphors and symbolism and things like that. Actually, I, in high school, I really struggled in English class because I, I just don't have the brain that comprehends how to do that. Like, I don't know how to analyze things and be like, oh, this is a meaning for this. I don't get it. That's not how my brain works. And it's not like I'm an idiot. It's just not how my brain works. Like, I need things kind of laid out, spoon fed to me. Tell me what it is that you're trying to say because otherwise I don't get it. Um, it's just not not something that I've ever ever been able to do. So I don't quite pick up all of the symbolism and everything that's in here, but the actual story, taking the story at face value, what ends up happening, I was like, oh my gosh, this went in a direction that I was not expecting. There's a lot of like violent, gory scenes and, um, some animal cruelty scenes that I was like depressed reading this book. Like this book kind of fucked me up. A lot of um, trauma, mental illness, and it was a wild, wild time. There were some things that happened at the end of this book that I did not see coming. I was like, holy shit. So, um, you know, it, it was off to a slow start the first half and I wasn't picking up 100% of things that maybe I was supposed to pick up. I don't know. I don't know. But I did end up really enjoying this. So I went with four stars overall. Um, and I highly recommend if you're looking for just a depressing book, look no further. <laughs> now, guys, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. I was thinking about throwing these guys in here, but I'm just not in the mood. I think I'm all horror novellaed out. I'm depressed. Like, 
I just need a little break so I think I might throw these in another vlog and yeah I hope you enjoyed this was the most successful reading vlog of my entire life I had all four and five star reads like I think I'm just gonna quit while I'm ahead I hope you enjoyed let me know in the comments down below if you read any of these and your thoughts and I will see you in my next video